Hey guys, VBad here with another V plays, and we're taking out a very underloved aircraft, the F7U Pirate. Uh, I think the reason people don't like this thing is because when you look at the icon, it shows a diamond here indicating that this is a fighter. It really should be a heavy fighter. This thing might as well be an F2H. It is going to be a really good aircraft for intercepting heavies. It's going to be decent for intercepting your bombers or ground attackers. Um, but where it's really going to struggle is against another light fighter. So that F-86 is going to be a real pain for us. Ooh, Vimy and a ground attacker and tank noob. Nice. I don't know how Vimy just crashed, but I'm assuming he's not happy about it. We well, said we're good at intercepting heavy, so let's showcase nothing. Nothing at all. Never mind. Alright. I know there's an F-86 over here, so let's... Good hits. F-86 is on R-6. Oh, nice. Teamwork makes the dream work, guys. Let's head back for the mid. There's a heavy. Lawrence in his F2H. Knocked him out. This thing's... Yeah, I was about to say... You kind of stole that from me, man. Just saying. He is up there. Can we get the little... Little bit. Tap, 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 tap. Nope. Not quite. Oh! So close. Oh, we have a 262HG2 on our team. Maybe he can go get him. Oh, no. Well, we're going to have to go get that. Agreed. That's the alt tab button. I don't know, I'm probably going to crash into something. I am waiting for my screen to come back. Mouse up. There it is. Something is behind me. Okay, he's broken off. It is indeed the F-86 Sabre. We got two human ground attackers. I have high hopes. This might be a mistake. All right, we picked up the military facility and it looks like AA killed that guy. Ooh, 
I don't know if going after a 212 is going to be my best move ever, but again, we've got the same guns as an XF90. Oh no, he's behind us. Oh. Did we get lucky? I think you saw a squirrel. You gonna come back over here? That's a bold move, Cotton. Too high. Maybe. Maybe. Boost, 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 boost. Boost, boost, boost. No. Maybe. Oh man, he got me. But guess what? Squall line. So, uh, I think we might be in a good spot here. We're going to respawn. He's like right next to us. Oh, we got eyes on him. He doesn't have eyes on us yet. Go get him, attacker. Got him. Got him. Oh, now we got I-211 here. All right, hold on. I think we just took his tail out. Nice. Get some of this boost back.
have two age guns for the pin. Stop overheating. Oh. Got him. Whew. Got him. He only got the one aircraft left. They're gonna get it unless I can kill him. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> I barely talked through that whole thing. I'm like, man, I'm not going to be able to use this recording. I'm having a heck of a time. This is a rough fight. I can barely speak. But you know what? That finish makes it all worth it. That was awesome. All right. What were all the things I was trying to say? F6U. It's an aircraft that used to come off of the Corsair line and was like an alternate option for the F94D. Which, why would you choose anything except for the F94D? Yeah, look at these. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, man. They gotta be so heated. <laughs> I can't believe I got up and got that guy. Uh, anyways. Tech tree. It used to be right here next to the F-94D. You could take the F-2G and you would jog down and you could go to the pirate and then come over to the F-7U through an alternate line. But why would you do that when you could have the F-94D? Relatively the same maneuverability, but you get a Gatling cam, you get air-to-air -air rockets. Doesn't make any sense. What we've said as players and content creators for years was it should be right here, which is what they eventually did. So Wargaming does listen from time to time. But it would come off of the P-51H be an optional cannon fighter because it was always a fighter not a multi-role and then it would jump over the f2h this makes a lot of sense and i'll show you why because boom, pull up that cannon and then let's pull up these cannons boom. oh they're the exact same cannons <laughs> uh the only difference here uh, well, there's no difference between these two, so you get to go to the Banshee after this. You've already gotten used to the guns, and now, bam, you're good to go. You're off to the races. And then this prepares you for the same type of gun characteristics as the XF-90. Oh, it's the exact same guns. The only difference here is that while the F-2H and the F and the sorry the F-6U only get four of these compared to six and yes it does make quite the difference but if you can get used to the lead on these guns and kind of burst firing so they don't overheat this is for all intents and purposes guys this is an f2h or a, like a baby xf90 to a certain extent it doesn't have the same altitude and speed characteristics obviously but it's a nice transition now you get mediocre altitude performance right this is like medium high altitude performance it isn't going to be where the p51s can get at this tier but i think it has a place it has a place it's can get some pretty decent maneuverability the climb rate 564 feet per second that is a really good climb rate uh give you some comparison i guess la 160 554, Yak 19, 497, F94D 531, and then only 457 for the 262 HG3. So yeah, this thing, it's a bit of a rocket ship. And there, yeah, it's, uh, this is the real monster, but that's only because of weight. 
So yeah, this thing can climb up like a rocket ship and can get up to that EF-131 at the end of a battle and be able to get that kill in order to secure the victory. That's what you can do with this. It is unique. It's weird. It's a really great way to get over to heavies. If you were the Mustang person, you're like Mustang, Mustang, Mustang. You can jog over to the F2H and the XF90 from this position. You wouldn't have to fly any of these four heavy fighters and you could dive right in. It's a great way to kind of give you a dual advancement capability. The ability to advance on two lines essentially simultaneously where it de deviates at tier 8 which allows you to be able to try two different things. That is a good bang for your buck if you're trying to go down the American line and I think anyone out there will tell you the XF90 is considered one of the best heavy fighters in the game at this time just because of the speed and the ability to just absolutely dominate the battlefield by controlling that speed aspect and the F6U can be your avenue to get there. You might not love it, you may hate it, but once you learn how to use it, I think you can appreciate what it can bring to the fight. Case in point. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this battle, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.